Hello everyone and welcome to another super science video with the Mastodon Regional Library. I'm Miss Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and today we're going to be continuing my series on simple machines. For the past two months we've done the inclined plane, which is, it helps decrease the work, which is what all simple machines do by making it easier for to move an object uphill. And I thought that a, the next machine will good we're going to do is going to be the wedge, which looks a lot like an incline plane. It's tapered at the end, like there's a skinny end and then there's a big end. But the difference between the incline plane and the wedge is that an incline plane just stands there. You don't have to really do any work, you just have to walk on top of it. But a wedge, you have to actively do something to make it work or decrease the work for us. And so I'm not going to I could tell you some more about the differences between an incline plane and a wedge, but I think it'd be a great idea for me to show you guys. So let's cut the camera for a second to where I'm going to show you. Okay, guys, I'm going to just show you quickly the difference between the incline plane and the wedge. As you can see, there's the ramp is an incline plane. It um, starts low at the bottom and makes its way up. It makes us work easier. We don't have to go upstairs to get to that door from the ground. And, but the ramp isn't moving. You don't need to move it or anything for it to work in this case. But let's come over here to the wedge. And we have a wedge right over here. Oh, look, we have a doorstop. Now, this doorstop is used to hold the door open, which decreases the work we have to do of us holding the door open ourselves. And so, however, if I just open the door, the wedge isn't doing anything. We have to be active and we have to move the wedge to make it work. So I'm going to take this wedge, let's go my wedge, I'm going to open the door back up. And I had to move it to the place and I'm going to use my foot to kick it into place. And then, as you can see, the door is staying open, which decreased the work I had to do. And it's the wedge, it, wedges have so many different functions. And in this case, it's increasing the friction between the door and the floor. And that way, the wedge is in between, is keeping it in place for us. And now let's do some more uses of wedges in real life. All right, guys, as you can just see, the wedge, um did a great job of holding that door open, and but there's many different types of wedges and they have many purposes. And so what I thought today's experiment could do is we could figure out what wedge would be the best for cutting this Play-Doh in half. And I thought it would be fun to make our own Play-Doh too. We just need a few ingredients for it. So you're gonna need some type of bowl. You'll need water. You'll need a one cup measuring cup and a half cup measuring cup a spoon to store. Um, you can, if you want to make your Play-Doh colorful, we have some food coloring. It's going to get a bit messy, so I recommend that we get a tablecloth. And flour is important. And then to, oh, and we can't forget salt as well. And then for different wedges, you can find so many different types of wedges around your house. Just make sure you ask an adult first what's okay to take. Um, as I showed you, the doorstop is a wedge, but we also have the end of a screwdriver. You could get a binder clip, a butter knife, a pointy eraser, a fork even, and here's a little paintbrush that has a wedge to it as well, but there's some other things that you can look for too. So let's go ahead and get started in making that Play-Doh. All right, guys, let's get started making that Play-Doh. The first thing I want to do is I measured up a cup of water, and this is part was optional, but if you wanted to make your slime, I mean your Play-Doh a little more colorful, you can add some drops of coloring to it. So then once the food coloring's in the water, you're going to take your spoon and stir it together to make sure that the food coloring is all throughout the water. Okay, so let's set that aside for a minute. And then the next thing we need to do is we're going to put one cup of flour in the bowl. And then we're going to put the one half cup of salt in the bowl. And then what you want to do is you don't want to just dump the water into the bowl because that's not going to help us make our Play-Doh very well. So what you're going to do first is we're going to stir the flour and the salt together carefully. Make sure it's all mixed in together. Then once we do that, we're going to gradually add in the water. 
and stir at the same time. So just like not pour it in, but just like a little, like kind of like this, a little bit at a time, stir it up, add some more in. Keep doing that until you run out of water. So let me do a little bit more. Keep doing it. And as you can see that the, the flour and the salt is lumping together. It's a chemical reaction. I'm gonna keep dumping. And then we're gonna do one more, the last of the water, and we're gonna mix it all together. And we're gonna just, and if you're, and you, if you find that your Play-Doh is too goopy, you can always add a little more flour to it. But if you find that it's like breaking apart and it's kind of hard, you may wanna add a little bit of water to it as well. So I think in my case, I think the, Mine is a little bit too goopy. So I'm going to just carefully add a little bit more flour to it. Just a little bit. I don't want to add too much. So keep stirring it. Yeah, this is helping it. It's not quite as goopy, but we still got a little ways to go. So let me dump some more in there. Because you want to get it to where it's nice and thick that you can like hold it in your hand without it like gooping everywhere like it kind of is doing right now, but it is a little thicker than it was. So I'm just gonna keep adding my flour. I think this might be a little bit better. Keep going. All right, a little bit more. And you just kind of got to experiment to see what's gonna work best. The um, one cup flour and the one half cup salt and one cup water is just kind of like a base. And I used all purpose flour in this. I don't know if like a different, like a bread flour will work any differently, but if you guys want to experiment and find out, that would be great. So let's see, it's a little bit more. All right, I think this is starting to come together nicely. As you can see, it's not as drippy as it was. Hmm. Keep going. I'm gonna stir for a while. This maybe takes about, I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes to make total. But I'm probably gonna cut a little bit out just to speed things along. But I do wanna show you guys how to stir it. And I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Keep stirring. All right, it's starting to become a big lump. There we go. I think one more should do the trick. There we go. It's See, it's like becoming a ball now. This is what you want. You want the ball. All right. And then once you have a ball kind of like this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump it on the table and we're gonna do what's called kneading it, which is gonna make it like more elastic and make it stick together better for our experiments. Let me dump this out. Here we go. And then this is where it's gonna get kind of messy, but fun. Make sure I get all of it out. Just a little bit more in there, perfect is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands and we're gonna just like kind of move it back and forth. You can pick it up and just kind of move it around. See how it's kind of sticking to my hands? The goal is when it stops sticking to your hands, that's when you know that your Play-Doh is ready. So I'm gonna just pick it up. We're gonna move it together. I'm gonna take a lump. We're gonna press down. We're gonna fold this over the top and this is also why it's good to have a tablecloth. And we're gonna keep doing this for about five minutes. So just keep playing around with it. Um, I'm gonna cut to the finished product and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use wedges with our Play-Doh. So I'll show you one more time. So just keep it, kneading it. And like I said, once it stops sticking to your hands, you know that it's finished. So let's do it five minutes.
All right, as you can see, the Play-Doh is now ready and it's not sticky anymore. So we're going to see what kind of wedge does the best job of cutting this in half. And let's start with our old friend, the door stopper. Let's see if this works. Hmm. Let's see. It's coming apart a little bit. A little tricky. But it's a little awkward to use. Let's try something else. Let me show you a different type of wedge. This one is small. It's a little pencil or acer. But we also have a thumbtack. And you may not think a thumbtack is a wedge. So I'm just going to show you with the magnifying glass. Right there. You can see that tiny little wedge right there. Let's see how this little thumbtack does. Um, well, it does a great job of poking some holes in it, but it's not the best task, the best use of the wedge. This wedge is probably better for, like, sticking paper onto a wall or a bulletin board. Now, I have a clothespin. You can see the wedge right here. Let's see if that does anything. Well, it's making marks, but is it cutting it in half? Let me pick it up and see. Mm, nope, it's not. It's not deep enough to cut in half. Let's try a couple more. Let's see. We'll try this paintbrush. we we'll have the wedge on the end. All right, well, we're starting to figure out that some of these wedges are great for making designs in your Play-Doh, but they're not doing a good job of cutting it in half. Let's see, well, let's see, what else can we do? Let's do this binder clip. It's like, cause there's the wedge at the end of it. So let me cut it in half. Another one, it's doing a little better than some of the other wedges, but not quite getting it in half. So let's try one more. Let me roll this back into a ball. Okay, so let me move the tablecloth's getting a little wrinkly here. Okay, so then the last one we're going to do is the knife, and a butter knife. Don't use a sharp knife, but let's see how this one does. Oh, this was looking very promising. Yes, here we go. It's cutting our Play-Doh in half. So we know that the butter knife is the right wedge for the job or the work we needed to do, which was to cut it in half. And, but like, like I said, like wedges have different functions. Like we wouldn't be using this knife to hold the door open, would we? No. And it's just kind of just look around your house, look what different wedges you have and see what you can find. Or if nothing else, you can just enjoy playing with your new Play-Doh. All right, everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed testing out different wedges to see what would cut your Play-Doh. And just keep looking around, and wherever you look, you may find wedges in places that you never expected. And I found two books when I was researching for this video. And the first is that series I was started with the Incline Plane. This is the Wedges book, and this is by Louise Spilsbury. And this series is great because it does a lot of real-life wedges and I have just like a few that I didn't even expect. For example, did you guys know that teeth are a wedge? This, this crocodile is showing us. And I like her work because like she explains things in a way that it, it's like it's very thorough but you don't like feel like you're overwhelmed by it as well. And then like all the functions that wedges can use is like slicing and cutting and even a grater has wedges in it too. So if you want to learn more about wedges, I highly recommend this book. And if you had fun making your Play-Doh, I thought that the next level is you can make your own slime. And this book is called Colorful Slime by Louise Nelson. And it has two slime recipes in it. And I like it because it's very bright. It talks about like chemistry is like the, what we're doing is mixing chemicals together to make something different. And I just like how bright it is. You learn about colors as well. And the ingredients for the slime are things that you can find around your house as well. And I just like, and it's just like the pictures are just a lot of fun. And it just kind of inspires you to test out different colors and what you can do by mixing different ones together, like two primary colors to make a secondary color. So I highly recommend both of this, these books. And thank you again for joining me for a super science video. I look forward to sharing more experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.